All right, so let's start doing some examples here. So the first thing we're going to do in all of these is find the parent chain, right? So the obvious one here is go straight across. And that would be one, two, three, four, five, six carvings. Um, but what I do is you always want to try it other ways to see if you can get anything longer. So try this way, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So no matter what, we're going to get six here. Um, I'm going to do one in blue just so you're aware. Right? I could try that. Right? Those are carbons all connected, but that's only four in a row, which doesn't do us any good. So we're going to go with a six carbon chain. And again, we found we could draw it straight across or we could have gone up. I'll go ahead and go straight across. So all of those carbons that I have circled are attached to hydrogens and naming all of those is included in the hexane name, right? Hexane says we have six carbons. It tells us it's an alkane. In other words, there's no double bonds. So that's going to be hexane. Next, we need our substituents. So our substituents are here in blue. There's a CH3 and there's a CH3. So each of those are going to be methyl groups. Methyl and methyl. And now we have to number it, right? So numbering, we can number from left to right or we can number from right to left. If we go across this way, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? Our first substituent would be on carbon two. If we were to go the other way, which is going to be wrong, um, this would be carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, and this one would be carbon four. So our first substituent would be on carbon four. So we don't want that because two is less than four. So we can get rid of all of the black numbers here. All right. Um, and that brings us to writing the final name. So we have two methyls, so it's going to be dimethyl. So dimethylhexane, but now because I say there's two methyls, that means we have to have two numbers. So it's going to be two comma three with a dash. So that means we have one methyl on carbon number two, we have another methyl on carbon three. So your final answer here would be two three dimethylhexane. All right, so now let's look at the next one. Um, this one has a lot more stuff to it, if you will. But again, you're going to follow the same set of rules. Uh, first, we're going to find the parent chain. I can have one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I go make the turn that way, I could go, let me go ahead and erase, erase all that. If I go straight across, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could do it starting up here and going down, and I'll also get eight. If I went like this, right, because all those carbons are connected, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's not going to be my shorter. So it looks like the longest one we can get here is going to be eight. So let me clear everything off here and circle the eight. We'll go straight across. All right, so eight is going to be octane. And again, A-N-E is the suffix because it's an alkane. Now we have to circle anything, any other carbons or anything else it's not just a hydrogen, it's not in the parent chain. So this CH3, that CH2, CH3, and that CH3 are all substituents. Now I don't have to worry about the hydrogens there, there, and there, because those are really part of the parent chain. I could have written, like the original molecule could have had that as a CH, that as a CH, and that as a CH, and it wouldn't have changed anything what we're doing. So one thing that you'll notice is sometimes these molecules are drawn with a condensed structure. 
Sometimes it's a complete structure, and sometimes it's like a hybrid of those structures. And you also need to be able to name things based on a skeletal structure as well. We just haven't seen that yet. But again, you have to be familiar with all of those different structures. Um, okay, so in terms of naming this one, it started off with an octane. We figured out our substituents. We have um, a methyl. We have a methyl. And we have an ethyl. Right? And now we have to name and number all those substituents. So we need to figure out which way we're going to number to have our first substituent being the lowest possible number. If we go from left to right, this one here would be carbon. This first methyl would be a carbon 2. That would be carbon 2. And if we were going from right to left, this one would be carbon 1, 2. And our first substituent would be on carbon 3. So we need to use number from left to right. So let me clean up a little bit here. And let's just go ahead and number them. Uh, I'll number them in blue here, carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, six, seven, eight. Right. Always a good idea to write out those numbers, not only to help you with numbering your substituents, but also to make sure that we have the right uh, parent chain here, eight is octane. All right, so I have a methyl on carbon two and one on carbon six. All right, so that's going to be two, six, and then an ethyl at number five. So here, now that we have both an ethyl and methyls, we have to alphabetize it. So ethyl comes before methyl. So in this case, we're going to start off by saying five ethyl. And then we have two methyls. So we have a methyl on carbon two and a methyl on carbon six. And because there's two methyls, it's going to be dimethyl octane. So 5-ethyl-2,6-dimethyl octane. Ooh, that's a lot. All right. Um, moving on to the next one. Here's another one. So in this case, one more time, we have to go through our procedure of finding the parent chain. Right, in this case, it's going to look like this. If we count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is heptane. And that substituent is going to be a methyl here. And a methyl there, All right? Those are both methyl groups, methyl and methyl. Um, they're both at carbon four, leaving the numbering as they currently are. If we were to number the other direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the same thing. So either way, it's going to be the first substituent's going to be on carbon four. So what we'll do for this one is we have, again, we have dimethyl. We have dimethylheptane. Because it says dimethyl, we need two numbers, but they're both on carbon four. So we would say four comma four dimethylheptane. And that would be the final answer for this one. We want to look at going kind of backwards from this. So basically going from the name to drawing the structure. Um, and I'm going to draw both a skeletal structure and a complete structure. I find it's a little bit easier to draw a skeletal structure. Um, but I also want to make sure that you know how to look at it as a complete structure as well. Hopefully by me drawing both, it'll help you kind of make that connection on being able to go from a skeletal to a complete structure and vice versa. All right. So for this particular one, 2,2-dimethylbutane, um, you're always going to work going from the end of the molecule. So start with the parent chain, in this case, butane, and then work back. So drawing a skeletal structure for butane, it looks like that. So in other words, there's four carbons. If you remember, the carbons 
are at the end of any line or when two lines come together. So where that dot is, there's a carbon there. That dot, there's a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. So it's four carbons, which is what we have for butane. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those dots. Um, and after that, we have butane. Whoops. Don't need those up there either. Um, so in addition to butane, we need to add the 2,2-dimethyl part. So 2,2-dimethyl basically means we're going to have methyl groups on carbon 2, and we're going to have two of them. So the question here is, how do you know which one carbon 2 is? Because right, we can number those carbons 1, 2, 3, and 4. Or we can number them 1, 2, 3, and 4 going backwards. Right? And the answer here is it doesn't matter which one of those you picked. Both of those structures would be right as long as you draw the carbons or the methyl groups on carbon 2. I naturally read from left to right like I'm sure most of you do. Um, so I'm going to use the red numbers just because it's more natural for me. But you could really do it um, either way here. So now that we have those numbers there, I'm going to go ahead and actually erase the red numbers too, just so I have room to draw in my, my methyls. Um, so the methyl group would be a CH3 from up there. And I'm going to go ahead and write CH3 just to show you. And then a CH3 down there. So that would be our 2,2-dimethylbutane. Now, I don't have to draw that CH3 there. That structure that I have drawn there which is correct for 2,2-dimethylbutane, could also be written this way. There's our butane. You draw a methyl up there. You draw a methyl down there, and it's done. Right? Those two are exactly the same. One of them shows a CH3, but in this case, right, the area that I'm circling in green here, that's a CH3, and that's a CH3. Right? A carbon at the end of a line is going to be a carbon with enough hydrogens to give it four bonds, which makes it a CH3. All right, so that's two different ways you could um, kind of draw that structure. Now, if I wanted to draw it out as a complete structure, right, you would start at the end. You have a carbon with an H3, right? So that CH3 basically goes right there. And then you would have a carbon let me circle this one in green. It would be this carbon right there. And on that carbon, there's no hydrogens attached because instead of a hydrogen, we're going to go up here and we're going to have a CH3. And down here, we have a CH3. And then over here, it's attached to a carbon. This one is going to be a CH2 and then a CH3 on the end. Okay, so the, let's see if I have enough colors for all of this. That carbon in blue is gonna be that carbon, that's the CH2, and then we'll go in orange, that's the CH3 one that goes to there. All right, so again, you have a skeletal structure, you have kind of a mixture. This one would be the pure skeletal structure. Um, the first one over here is kind of a mixture of a skeletal structure with a little bit of a condensed structure with those two methyls. And then the one over on the right is completely a, um, is a complete structure, all right? So hopefully that helps you visualize those differences. All right, so now that I've done that one, let's go down and do 3-ethyl-5-propylnonate. And I think for this one, I'll just draw the, the, um, the, the skeletal structure because it's no name, which is a pretty long one. So just to save a little bit of time, let's do that. So for no name is nine carbons. So that's one carbon to two to three to four to five to six to seven to eight to nine. All right. So that's your nine carbon long parent chain. And now we have to draw our substituents. So we need a three ethyl and a five propyl. So we're going to go to carbon three which is right here. We're going to draw an ethyl. So an ethyl is a CH2 and a CH3. Let me 
this here would be a CH2, and then in the end you would have a CH3, right? And then for 5-propyl, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here's your number 5. The propyl would go, propyl is 3 carbon, so that's 1 carbon, 2 carbon, 3 carbon, right? And again, that one would be CH2, CH2, CH3. Um, does it matter whether I draw this substituent up versus down? No, it does not. Does it matter that this one is drawn down versus up? No, it does not. You can draw them either way. Um, and you could also, and sometimes you'll see them drawn this way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, briefly erase these substituents real quick. Right, another way that uh, you'll sometimes see this is like for the ethyl, you might see this up here and it just say CH2. CH3. So sometimes you'll see it where you have a partial skeletal structure versus a partial um, condensed structure. And then the 5 propyl would be down here where you have CH2, CH2, CH3. So you might see it in any of these various forms. So just be aware of those that they exist. All right. So last um, slide for this video, which I know has been a long one. Um, just to point out that whenever we're talking about a lot of different drugs like aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol, things like that, the aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol, those are typically generic names because as you'll see on the slide here, right, ibuprofen is technically with an IUPAC name called 2 and then 4, 2 methylpropyl phenyl propanoic acid. So no one wants to go to the to the store and ask for 242-methylpropylphenylpropanoic acid. That's not, doesn't really roll off the tongue too well. Um, so all drugs will have an IUPAC name, but then the, generally there is going to be some a generic name of the drug. In this case, it's ibuprofen. That's going to be an internationally approved name of the drug. And then particular companies who make that drug can give that drug their own kind of trade names. For instance, Advil or Motrin. Motrin and Advil are the same thing. They're ibuprofen. They're 242-methylpropylphenylpropanoic acid, but the different companies call it a different thing, but it's still the exact same chemical that you're getting. So whenever, for those of you who are like the nursing majors and you're looking at the drugs, just kind of understand, right, if a patient ever asks you, should I take Motrin or Advil, right, there's really no difference unless some of them have different additives to them, so you have to be a little bit careful with that. But in terms of the active drug, it's pretty much always going to be uh, the same between these, or at least for different drugs that have the same actual active chemical in it. So there will be the same uh, organic chemical with the same IUPAC name that can have different trade names.